Hi, I'm Louise from Permajet, and I'm here today with William Chung, who's the editor of the Photography News. And Permajet have literally just found out that we've just won the prestigious award for best inkjet media again from the Photography News readers, which we're absolutely over the moon about. We couldn't be more thrilled. And it was this time it was for FB Distinction. So, uh, Will, about the awards, can you tell us a bit about how they're structured and, and how the awards are actually chosen? Yeah, no problem. Um, and it's great to see you, Louise. We haven't seen each other for some time, so it's great to see you even, even virtually. Um, <laughs> uh, the awards have been going for a few years, and uh, it's only we brought in because um, we wanted to recognise products, because photography news is very much about products and, and what kit, image creators use nowadays. So we have all the normal categories like cameras and lenses, or the, if you like, the glamorous categories. Mm. But we're also mm. keen to recognise um, what you would call them as imaging peripherals, like, like paper. So we brought in um, any number of categories. I think there are about 40 categories now and two for inkjet papers. So we have one which is for photographic finished papers and one for fine art papers. And we, um, at the end of the year, we normally just go through the um, what's on the market, what's turned up new, et cetera. And we shortlist a number of products. So we, this year, or rather last year for 2021, we shortlisted um, Permajet's FB Distinction 320 and then we ask our readers to vote. So there are six products in the in the short list, and then readers just vote. And this year, and congratulations, congratulations to Permajet, you won. I mean, to be fair, you are um, a serial winner because your products are so well respected within the business, Louise. So, so well done, the Permajet. Well, thank you. I mean, it's um, and it's all down to your readers. So, you know, we've got to say from Permajet a huge thank you to all your readers who actually voted for it. It's um, we're really proud to have the range of papers that we have at Permajet and we couldn't be more thrilled to actually win this uh, award again uh, as we won it for the titanium last year or the year before, I should say. So uh, we're absolutely chuffed to bits, as you can tell. Smiley face. <laughs> we're really pleased. So it's uh, brilliant. Well, it is well deserved. Always. I mean, as you say, you have a good range and um, Permajet is constantly innovating. I mean, um, I always struggle to think, well, it's a paper. What else can you do with a paper? But you guys seem to keep on coming up with new materials and new weights and new finishes and everything else. It's it's wonderful. And we are blessed with such a great choice, not just from you, but from everybody. It's awesome. Yes, it is. I mean, it's 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 very complicated for the viewers to actually decide on what paper choice to actually use. And one of the attributes of the FB distinction, of course, is that it's a very versatile paper because it's actually got such a white base to it, it actually suits most aspects and topics of photography. So whether it's black and white or color, um, it works and performs equally as well. So I think that's what the, uh, the plus side is. And uh, it really is a, a versatile paper. And I think that's why it's so popular with the readers. So, which is absolutely amazing. And I know that you recently reviewed the, uh, the FB Distinction in the magazine. So what are your thoughts on it? Because I know you use it for your own images, don't you? I certainly do. And um, yes, it, it came out very well in the review. I mean, our, our review process is, is quite simple, well, at least from my perspective. I, I, I download the um, profiles which are supplied from the manufacturers. So I download the profiles from the, from the Permajet website. And then I make my own profiles. So I do some comparisons and, and things like that. And I use an Epson printer, um, so with, with Epson inks in it. And I just, um, I, like I said, I use the, the standard profile to start with and then add my own. And then just do some comparisons and do some a series of pictures. I, I, I go from fully toned uh, black and whites with lots and lots of greys in to very contrasty, gritty black and whites, which is my own preference. And also use uh, portraits, so I get an idea of how flesh tones look. And then some natural history, history subjects, so I get how you know, natural history looks. And then of course, bung in some landscape shots as well. So mm. my paper tests incorporate um, a broad range of pictures, producer an Epson a printer, um, and I just started, and, and of course it's very, very subjective, Louise, as you know. So, um, you know, that's the thing with papers, that there's such a huge choice out there. Yeah. Um, and I must admit, you know, FB Distinction is something I like, and you mentioned the, the bright white base, and that's what's gorgeous about it. I mean, I know to remember your Barata collection, the Barata papers can have a, a creamier, uh, slightly uh, yellow, if you like, uh, feel to it. But the distinction has got OBAs in it for the for the white base. And it's uh, I like it because of that. Mm -hmm. And it's not just the, the feel of it, of course, but it's the, 
you know, the smell and the heft. It's, um, yeah, all around loveliness. Well, it reminds you of the old darkroom days <laughs> where you use the chemicals and you can, you can still smell it, which is absolutely brilliant. So, uh, no, I think you've, uh, when you actually say that the paper is obviously very versatile, um, as I said before, it's very difficult for your readers to actually um, understand which paper type is the best one to actually use. And it's really important to try and understand how a paper can enhance an image, because if you actually look at the uh, print the image actually on a wrong paper choice, um, then that doesn't suit the image, then it won't enhance it, unfortunately. So and we've actually created um, a document called the knowledge and the knowledge can be downloaded from our Permajet website. And you can download this and it'll go through every range of the Permajet papers and it'll actually go through what the attributes are for each paper type and also what the paper is best used for. So it's a little guide to actually help the readers uh, to actually understand which paper type they might want to try for their particular images. So it's interesting to say that you actually started off using the generic profiles when you were using the FB distinction. How did you find the generic profiles worked in relation to a bespoke profile? Uh, the differences, to be fair, um, are quite small. And I think if you, if you saw the pictures in isolation, i.e. the ones generated on the generic profile and the ones on the custom profile, if you looked at them independently of each other, I think you would struggle to tell a difference that they, they both worked really well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's one finding. The generic profiles provided by Permajet are very, very good. So I think if you haven't got the wherewithal to, to produce your own, or, you know, I know you offer a pre free profiling yeah. service, um, but some people can't be bothered with the process. And if they're happy with what they get, then that's fine. But, you know, like I said, I did find the generic profile worked pretty darn well. And like I said, only when you start looking at them, at the minutiae of the detail, you think, OK, the yellow is slightly better in that print than that print. Yeah. So, the, the, you know, the differences, differences I thought were, were quite small, which I think is an impressive thing in itself. Well, it is. I mean, what we've got to remember as well is that to actually send in a target patch into us on the Permajet paper you want profiled is a complimentary service. And it does actually give you that absolute optimum quality. So it'll make sure that the colours are absolutely bob on to actually print exactly what you actually see on your screen. So, uh, and I think that's an important note. If you're stuck with running the profile patch, then please call us. We're only too happy to actually uh, go through and actually help you create that. But it's, uh, it's nice of you to say about the generic profiles because they, they do work. Um, but just in case you want that bespoke uh, quality, then, then you need to run off the target patch. Now, I know that you've got a series of images there, Will, which uh, we've actually printed out on uh, the FB distinction. And we've also printed the uh, Im same image out on a different paper type. So it'd be interesting to actually hear your feedback on it. And I know the first uh, image that we're actually going to see is actually the, uh, the butterfly that you actually took. And um, the butterfly is actually on the actual image on distinction, really, really white base, really picks out the details of the wings. And I think you'll actually agree that every detail actually in the veins and the actual head of the flower actually really does come through, really makes it stand out, which is actually what you want the actual image to do. And then we actually printed the same image, but actually on a textured paper. And um, this one is actually on Museum Heritage. Museum Heritage is a textured paper which actually will soften the image, but it'll give you that texture and feel of the actual uh, flower head and also the actual butterfly itself. What do you think of the two, Will? How do you think them? Well, I have to say, I think they work well on both. Um, the, the, the whiteness, if you like, of the, of the marble white wings on um, the distinction I thought was, was was lovely and had that kind of snap to it, which I really liked. But that said, the the museum, museum heritage it's um, it's more subtle rendering, it works equally well, and um, it's it's one of those things where you actually you see them independently. You go, actually, I really like that. <laughs> and you, you wouldn't re you wouldn't reject either of them. I mean, um, they're lovely, and the, the blacks on the muse museum heritage are very good too. Mm. The shadows were quite deep because it was a photograph I took at sunset. Um, uh, and it looks lovely. Um, but the distinction, I suppose, I prefer only because the wings are slightly whiter. Um, I think if you're a natural his history specialist, which I'm not, 
um, they might prefer the more subtle rendering. But mm. I'm more of a graphic photographer, so I like this the stronger look. Of, yeah. Um, distinction. Yeah. I, I'll be I, I think it's think... perfect really well. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, it is down to personal choice. And that's why it's very important that when you're actually trying a paper out, that you actually make the decision. Because if you like the way the image is portrayed on that particular paper, don't yeah. be swayed by a friend saying, well, I don't like that. I use X, Y and Z. So if you like it, it's always down to a personal choice. So don't get swayed by it. But as you say, they work equally well. And I, the reason why I suggested that we print it out on Museum Heritage is that although it softens the image, it still shows the details in the actual marble white wings, which is absolutely fundamental to, to the actual image itself. And it draws the interest through to the actual wings of the marbled white as opposed to the flower head. So I think it's actually worked well for both. And uh, as you say, the FB distinction really makes it pop, being so white on the white base, makes the image really stand proud. So equally can be used, so a personal choice. And then the next image is a favorite location of mine, Dungeness, my goodness me. <laughs> uh, love that area. But on the FB distinction, this image really, really works and it's really, really powerful with the lovely colours and the deep saturation of the colours. It really does emphasise, A, the time of day that you took the shot, giving it that lovely sun feeling, um, but also it makes it very um, obvious where you've got the actual uh, railway tracks going through the image in the centre part of the frame. Really does emphasise that lovely, strong iron colour and, and I think it really works. Again, with the actual wooden boat on the left-hand side and the wooden shack on the right, it's actually subdued it. So the main point and the main impact are the railway lines to me. And I think it really does work and stands proud on FB distinction. But then I decided to actually print it out on photo art silk. Now, photo art silk is a cotton rag-based paper. And where the photo art silk actually works, it's very good for graduation of colour. And this particular shot, Will, I think uh, you'll agree with the lovely graduation of colour in the ironwork going through the shale right up to the sky level. Um, I feel this also might work for your particular image. What do you think? No, you're absolutely right, Louise. It does work. I mean, the again, as you say, the distinction has that punch and that depth. And the, the shadows are quite rich and strong, which is something I like. But the, you know, the art silk print is very good. And the shadow detail is, is very different. When you do hold them side by side, um, there's much more in the shadow detail. Certainly on that hut on the and that rusting area on the on the right hand side of the picture. Um, there's much more detail in there to, to enjoy. Um, again, I think they both work fabulously well. I've got no issue with either. Um, I'll be happy to accept either, to be honest. Um, the, the I like work. a bit of a, a spanner in the works there for you, Will. <laughs> <laughs> no, the thing is, I mean, as you say, it's, um, it's horses for courses, and there might be some days that come to this, well, to produce this print, I think, actually, I prefer a textured finish. So, as you said, there's no right or wrong. It's a matter of taste, and, and that taste can vary even from, from day to day. Mm. Um, you know, it, it certainly shows off the, the quality of distinction. There. Again, that white base helps to give the, the image that snap. The clouds are nice and clean. Yeah. Yeah, um, uh, that depth is is something which I, I personally like. Yeah, um, but I mean, nothing, really, that's wrong with the other shot at all. No, it really does shine through on the FB distinction and really makes it punchy and really wow, really comes alive, doesn't it? Whereas the photo art silk is actually more of a subdued shot, but you have got that lovely graduation of colour. And uh, of course, if uh, you wanted to try the different papers then um, we actually do various test packs for the family range. So you've got the digital test pack, you've got the fibre-based test pack, and also the fine art test pack, which will include our cotton rag-based papers and also our textures. So it's a very good place to actually try the papers. So uh, that might be an indication for you to actually try some um, different papers with perhaps the same kind of shot, but just try a different cotton rag-based paper to a gloss paper and then see what effect you get. So it's always uh, interesting to experiment. So, and now your next image, which is really works well. Where was this actually taken, Will? Um, well, I have a project on the uh, Docklands Light, Light, Light Railway in uh, East London. And this was taken, uh, looking at the O2, I think from uh, the station was Royal Victoria, I think. 
and I'm vague because it was some it's some years since I've been there because of the pandemic. So my project is very much on hold. It will start up again hopefully this later this year. Um, but um, yeah, what I did with the DLR project was basically because they're 25 miles of track. So I basically walked around. Uh, the, I followed the lines basically and took pictures as I went. So wow. I was looking at pictures and trying to fit, get the train within the landscape and took some pictures of of basically the locations as I went around. So this was a, a glorious day. The sun was shining. I had beautiful clouds. And um, of course, in the recent storms, the roof of the O2 Arena has been decimated. I've no idea what it looks like now. Um, but this was um, some years ago. Um, and here again, I wanted that I wanted that lively reproduction because of the, the bright colours and the, mm -hmm. the great, great crisp light. Um, and that's what I got on, um, I thought, on this thing. I thought that worked, worked really well. The sky wasn't over blue, and I think the distinction held it worked really well, didn't oversaturate it. Mm -hmm. uh, the red of the train looks good, and the, the whiteness of the domes come out really well. And yet, you know, despite that, all the shadow detail along the, along the bank there also works well. So I thought, um, yeah, distinction handled that really well. You've done my job for me there. <laughs> That's quite all right. <laughs> no, I mean, I, everything you said is exactly right. I mean, with the good colour saturation that you've got in the image, the FB distinction really brings it out. It really makes it punchy and really stands out. And it's handled the, the shadow details extremely well, even to the point on the pontoon where the boat is actually moored just on the right hand side there. It's uh, really brought out that detail just in the in the dark shadow areas. And it really does work and stand proud. And I think it's also interesting as well, Will, which is what I always say when I'm actually judging is actually um, if you actually put a key line round as you do for all your images, it actually holds your image in. And it gives us as the viewer like a 3D impression of the actual image. So that's always an important thing to actually think about. So, and I know Will does it, and uh, and I'm always uh, recommending it when I'm actually judging. So, uh, but it's it's nice to see because it really does hold the image in. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, and then uh, we've actually printed it, or I've printed it actually on smooth pearl. Now, smooth pearl is a warmer base paper, and that's in the digital photo range. So. Smooth Pearl is a luster paper. So because it hasn't actually got the detail um, of the FB distinction, it's actually, to me, has flattened the image. And for my um, pennies worth, um, I don't think it works on this particular paper choice, which is the reason why I've printed it out onto this paper. Because it's important for me to actually be able to show you that it's not always correct to actually choose a wrong paper choice. If you compare the two from the FB distinction to the smooth pearl, you'll actually see that the FB distinction is really punchy, really in your face and think, wow, look at that color saturation. Whereas the smooth pearl has actually flattened it. And to me, it doesn't work as well. What do you think, Will? Yeah, I think you summed up uh, very well there, Louise. And the thing is about the warmth of the paper, the warmth is over strong in the clouds because the clouds yeah. are, are, you know, they're white and, and quite neutral. And yet on the, on the pearl, they've gone slightly... Um, it's mildly yellow. I mean, not again. If you look looked at the two pictures independently, you wouldn't see anything wrong. But it's when you do that di direct comparison thing, oh. you think, oh yeah, those clouds have picked up a tinge there, which is a little um, looks slightly odd to me because I, I suppose in my mind's eye, I knew how I wanted it to look on it on FB distinction. I mean, you know, the the finish of the paper is, is lovely though, and the the reproduction is very good, and it would suit, I'd imagine, most subjects, but not this particular one. But that's yeah. unusual. It is unusual, yeah. I mean, with the warmth of the paper, um, Smooth Pearl is very, very good for portraits um, because it actually warms the, the skin tones up a little bit. Um, so, um, But it's not as universal as paper as the Oyster paper, which is in the digital photo range. Now, the Oyster paper is actually a very, very white base paper. So that works equally as well as does the distinction. They're both very white papers. They're just a different base. So um, the distinction will give you a lot more depth and contrast in your actual images. And uh, this is what we're seeing in Will's shots. Now, the, uh, the other image is a black and white image of which the FB distinction is equally works superbly well for black and white. Because it's actually got such a white base to it, it'll bring out any shadow areas that you've got in your image. And uh, this one is obviously Venice. So uh, I recognize this shot, a fantastic location to visit. 
And uh, this image really, really works well on distinction. Love the actual shadow details here. And going right through the canal, you can actually go take you right through underneath the bridge there. You've got some lovely detail in the actual shadow areas on both sides there. And it really does stand proud. The actual light on the uh, middle frame um, doesn't actually um, blur out in the shot. It's there. It's actually really worked well with the whiteness of the paper. And, um, and I think it really works superbly well. But then I actually decided to rock the boat slightly and uh, actually decided to print the same image, <laughs> Will is smiling, on Matte Plus. Now, what the Matte Plus has done from the digital photo range is that it's actually flattened the image down a bit. It's made it softer. And uh, it'd be interesting to hear Will's thoughts. This um, Venice picture, as you've identified the location for me, is um, from another project of mine, which is Venice at Night. And another project on hold right now because um, I'm not traveling anywhere and, and maybe I'll get to Venice end of this year. Um, but you know what? I think they both work really well. And the Matt Plus paper um, has performed a little better than, than I thought it might do in terms of dealing with a black and white subject. Because, you know, some matte papers can be um, quite flat and the blacks look less black, if that makes sense. Yeah. And they come more deep grey. But actually on the Matte Plus here, I think actually the blacks are really, really very, very nice. Um, and, and again, here looking at them side by side. Um, oh, God, I hate to say it, Louise, but I think you made a good choice here in going for the Matte Plus because I really, I really love it. <laughs> these work really well. And if I have an exhibition of these pictures, I'll, I'll say to you, hey, can I have some boxes of Matte Plus, please? Because it looks really good. I mean, there's nothing, like I said, as you said, there's nothing wrong with either of them. It's a no. matter of taste. And mm. I started by loving the glossy finish, but having seen it printed really well on a matte finish, hey, it, it works just as well. And there's still that depth and the whiteness is still there. Mm. I mean, okay, it's not, as, it's not as vibrant, the whiteness, in terms of um, the purity as it is on, the, on mm. the distinction, but it's not far behind. But what I do like on the, on the matte plus is, is the richness of the, of the grey tones. I think it works really very, very well. Um, and I'm looking at them here, Louise, and I'm going, yeah, I like this one for this way. I like, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm very much on the fence. I'll be, again, I think we've seen all four pictures here. I'll be happy with either, to be honest. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's an interesting point there. I was wondering which one you were going to go for. But, uh, but that's not to say, as you said, the FB distinction works equally as well. So if the FB distinction had been put in front of me and not the Matt Plus one, then uh, I would have said exactly the same comments. It works superbly well, brings out the shadow detail, and it brings out the lovely blacks, which Will was actually after in the shot. So, but um, I like throwing a little bit of a spanner in the works to actually say, well, just think about trying a different paper. <laughs> Don't always do uh, your initial uh, gut feeling on it. No, you've done a good job there, Louise, in throwing that spanner in the works because you you, you have made me think. I mean, it, it, is, it is very, very subjective. And I'm sure if I looked at this tomorrow, I'll be preferring the gloss as opposed to the matte and, and the next day it could be the other way around. But I think that the, the thing is it, it works well on both. So the point you make about trying different papers is, is perfectly valid. But certainly the distinction, you know, the, the vibrance of it is very, very good. The greys are lovely um, and it's worked out really well. There's no cast or anything on the, on the black and white print. Yeah. Um, yeah, it looks gorgeous. I think it's I think it's worth actually uh, mentioning as well. Depends what you're using the application for. So if you're using your images in a standalone um, competition or exhibition, then um, then equally the FB distinction would have actually worked superbly well. But again, if you're putting a panel together, whether it's for an accreditation or uh, you're doing a panel for a competition, then think about the overall uh, statement of how you want the panel to look. And, uh, and that might be worth actually thinking when you're putting a panel together, particularly for the RPS, which uh, I know you've been involved in as well. So um, now with the regards, obviously, to the paper sizes on Permajet, um, the digital photo range, we do range from six by four up to A2. And in the fine art papers, it's A4 uh, right up to um, A2. And then we actually do roll media as well. So there's plenty of sizes there for everybody to choose from, whether you've got an A4 printer or an A3 plus printer or an A2 printer. Um, but if you want to try the FB distinction, then we are more than happy to actually send you a couple of sheets 
completely free of charge. And the actual link for that will be at the end of this video for you actually to uh, click on and then uh, just order. And then we'll be only too happy to send you some samples to actually try. And it'll be interesting to hear your feedback on, uh, on how you print your images. So uh, that's absolutely brilliant, uh, Will. And I can't thank you enough for yourself and your readers uh, to actually choose the FB distinction because we really are absolutely thrilled to bits and it means a huge amount to the whole company. So uh, it really is a huge thank you. That's and our wanted... pleasure, Louise. And we're always happy to recognise excellent products. And, you know, I'm sure you've been the running um, for the 2020, 2022 awards, which we kick off oh, in November this year, which sounds an age away, doesn't it? God, well, yes, I don't know. With this, uh, how this year is galloping across, I don't think it's going to be too long till we're there. But um, no, I just want to thank you, Will, for your time today. It's uh, it's always really lovely to talk to you. And uh, and I will see you in person at the photography show, God willing. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you in September. And um, and that's uh, perhaps, hopefully, we'll be able to pick the award up then as well. <laughs> Well, hopefully. And uh, well, thanks for um, getting me involved, Louise. I'm always happy to talk photography and talk printing because I don't think photographers do enough printing, if that makes sense. Um, because I think for me, it's always the ultimate, you know, the final step in the imaging process from, from pre-visualisation to the, the finished print on a lovely paper and having it in front of you in your hands. Mm. Well, that for me is the ultimate. But uh, no, it's been a pleasure talking to you. It's, um, it's well done again pleasure. to Permajet. Yeah, and we'll see you again, no doubt. And all the best to you and to your viewers too. Thank you very much indeed, Will. Lovely to talk to you and see you soon.